Hi and welcome back to a new video. I just found something in the ASUS BIOS two days ago which could absolutely change everything for Intel with Alder Lake. Because I'm currently testing the non-K CPUs, you can see this is a 12600 non-K which I bought for testing because I'm still working on like price performance and price per watt comparisons with the non-K CPUs using an ASUS Maximus Apex board right now. And I'm running a 12400 right now, which is manually overclocked with B-Clock OC. You can see I'm running a B-Clock of 131. So the 12400 is overclocked on all of the six cores to above 5200 MHz. It's downclocking in between, obviously, because of the energy saving modes. And just to prove that this is not a bug, I'm running Cinebench R20. And under load, you can see all of the cores are constantly at 5240. Down here you can see 4688 is stock and now it's almost 6200 points. When I did the reference um, benchmarks without like CPU-Z open it was even higher. But that is insane. That is insane and it's not a readout error. This is legit. Doing the non-KOC is very simple. First of all you set your XMP profile which in my case is 5200C38. That will depend on the memory kit you're using. And then on the top left you have your target CPU core speed, DRAM speed and cache speed. All of these three depend on the B clock and also the individual multiplicator you're using with it. For example I had to downclock the DRAM frequency because if you use just XMP it will load this because it also depends on the B clock and 6800 certainly does not work with this kit. So you have to lower this to roughly something which is in line with your XMP speed. For the CPU core clock you set performance core ratio to sync all cores. And then you try to find the highest multi your CPU can sustain. You can for example start with 35 and then just use the plus on your keyboard until it doesn't allow to raise it anymore. And the max of this CPU of the 12400 is 40 and in combination of the B clock with 131 it will result in a CPU clock of 50 to 40 megahertz. Same goes for the cache. If you would leave this stock, the cache multiplicator is something like 38 or 40 and that would be too high to start. So I had to lower this to 33 to achieve a cache speed of around 4300. Some CPUs can do 4400 or 4500. It will depend on your individual CPU how high you can push the cache. And now the very important setting is in Tweaker's Paradise, unlock B clock OC. That is the magic option which appears if you insert a non-K CPU. You set this to enable. If this is set disabled then you will not be able to boot and your debug LED will always be stuck at 33. The last thing you have to do is adjust the CPU core voltage obviously because we are running a much higher clock than before. Set CPU core cache voltage to manual mode. You can try something between 1.3 and 1.4 volt. 1.37 seemed to be pretty much the ideal spot for my CPU. Higher did not really help to sustain a higher CPU clock. I also increased CPU input voltage to 1.9. This is due to the XMP profile and even with a higher B clock it's not necessary to increase for example the CPU system agent voltage. The last thing you can still do is adjusting the CPU load line calibration in Digi plus VRM setting to make sure that the CPU also keeps up the CPU voltage during load. Now hit F10 apply and you're good to go. I think I just found out the reason why nobody has found out about this so far. I'm still running the Apex with BIOS version 0811 but I switched to the 12700K. If I go over to the Extreme Tweaker, back into the Tweaker's Paradise menu, you can see the non-K overclocking B clock option is gone. It means that Asus made this option a little bit more intelligent. They probably hide it if you use a k skew CPU and whenever you switch to like a 12400 then it appears. But I think, well, the non-K CPUs just came to the market. That's probably the reason why nobody discovered this so far. And also, I mean, why would you buy an Apex board for 12400? That's probably the reason why nobody has discovered this so far. But I'm wondering in, on which boards this will appear and on which board it might not even be there. It's very hard to say because I asked the community today and yesterday about giving me screenshots from the tweakers menu and so far I could not spot it anywhere else but everybody was using a KSQ CPU that's why I'm not sure which boards will eventually support it and which boards will not support it. Obviously I was curious if this option also exists on the B660 boards. That's the only B660 board I currently have. It's a Tough Gaming M plus D4 so DDR4 version. I assembled the system right here, flashed it to the most recent BIOS, but unfortunately in the Tweaker's Paradise this option does not exist. 
Obviously, temperature and power consumption numbers will also be very interesting, just to show you some starting numbers, because this is the highest I can push the CPU for like 24-7 stable. You could see maximum temperature is on one core 96 during Cinebench, but that is the worst case. And the CPU power consumption, I'll just start this again to also show you the real load numbers. But this is consuming about 135 watt roughly, which I think is totally okay considering that this is the, the worst case scenario. And it's also running a fairly high V-core. I'm currently running 1.37 volt on the CPU. And that's also why we can see those kind of temperatures, but those are still okay considering that this is like the worst what you can get. Even though I'm only running the PUBG training mode, you can still see that the CPU temperature is typically in the area of about 45 to maybe 65 degrees Celsius. I haven't really seen 70 degrees Celsius. So that is the perfect temperature range for a CPU. Non-KOC existed before, for example, with the Skylake platform, but it had a lot of downsides. So for example, you had to disable features of the CPU and the B-clock was still tied to different parts of the system. But with Alder Lake, and Intel even advertised this themselves, that Alder Lake is the best overclocking CPU out there because everything can be individually tuned. That makes this so great because you can adjust the B clock and still run everything else stock. For example, the PCI Express clock. Even though I'm running 131 B clock, the PCI Express clock is still 100 megahertz. And that is so awesome. The only things you're adjusting and affecting is the cache frequency and the memory speed, apart from the CPU core speed. And all of these have individual multiplicators. So we can lower the memory speed and we can also lower the cache speed. This is perfect. And I'm very excited about this. This is probably the best thing I've seen in over a year or two years in the CPU overclocking world. Because if you take a 12400 and especially 12400F without the integrated graphics, which is even cheaper, it's about 170 euro right now here in Germany. With a few adjustments, like five minutes of work, you can get this past, especially 12600, 12600K, 12700K in gaming. I did a lot of benchmarks so far in comparison with 5600X, 5800X, 12700K, 12900K. Still have to finish some of the benchmarks, but boy, this is the thing. This is the big thing. Now I switched to the 12600 to show that this is also possible with this CPU, but you will also notice it's slightly lower clocked. The CPU cannot clock as high as the 12400, which is also quite interesting, because typically you would assume that a higher grade CPU like the 12600 has like a higher silicon grade and clocks higher, but you can see this is also silicon lottery and it peaks out at 5100 daily stable. I'm still not sure if this was just a random find in the Apex BIOS or if this also appears on different boards. Switched to the Hero with 12400 in the socket, let's check it out. I flashed the Hero to the same BIOS version as Apex 0811 and the CPU is again the 12400. If we go to Extreme Tweaker and Tweaker's Paradise, unlock B-Clock OC, it also exists on the Hero. So the Apex board is not the only one. I almost forgot that I also own the iGaming board and this also has the suspicious version 0811. Let's check. Unfortunately, I cannot spot the option in this BIOS. Now that the iGaming board does not support non-K overclocking, it kind of disapproves the fact that we can just go by the BIOS version 0811. There are eight boards listed in total currently with this BIOS version. We have three Strix boards and we have five Maximus boards. The Hero and the Apex are confirmed. The ITX board is not in the list. I also want to highlight that it's very likely that this feature only works whenever an external clock generator is used on the main board. I'm not sure right now because I'm not sure how this feature even works on the Asus board, but this would mean that it's only available on the very high-end boards like a Glacial Extreme, Formula, Asrock, Aqua. On those boards you have an external clock gen and then this would work. But at the moment I'm not sure if this feature is required or not. If that would be the case, then it's probably quite difficult to find this on a cheaper board, but I hope we will find out within the next next days. Let's finally talk about some solid performance numbers. We're starting off with Cinebench R20. You can see that the 12400 with our solid overclock can achieve a performance increase of 33%, closing in on the 12600K. The 12600K with four additional e-cores will certainly always beat even a heavily overclocked 12400 in multi-threading performance, but I guess we're very close and I think especially price per dollar 
this is going to be very interesting and we will also look at this, the price per cost comparison in a second. In 3D Mark times by Extreme CPU test, which is also heavy multi-threading and synthetic workload, the 12400 with heavy OC is also closing in on the 12600K, but it can beat a 5800X which has two cores more, and that is very impressive. I want to highlight that the CPUs have been tested with different memory configurations, simply because I did not have time to also repeat the full testing for the 12600K, 700K and 900K. Because in these slides, these three CPUs were tested with DDR4, 3600C14, which is still fairly quick, but a very high clocked DDR5 kit can certainly lead to a bit more performance. AMD was tested with 3600C14, which I think is a very good setting for AMD, and the 12400 and the 12600 Intel CPUs were tested with DDR5. Now, if we take a look at Far Cry 6 1080p high, the 12400 with our heavy OC beats even a 12900K, as I said before, which was running at DDR4. So probably with a strong DDR5 kit, the 12900K would be on par with our 12400. Note that all the gaming benchmarks are sorted by the minimum FPS. I also wanted to add Far Cry 6 with 4K resolution and ultra setting, even though the CPU load is much lower than in 1080p. But you can see also in this test setting, the 12400 is leading the chart. We get a very similar result in Battlefield 2042, also 1080p and high setting, the 12400 is leading the chart. But it can also be completely different, that's why I added PUBG with 1080p and eSports setting. Even though the 12400 is clocked very high, the 12600K, 700K and 900K are still much faster. Seems like this game can somehow benefit from the higher amount of cores. And now you could think that with all the lake and especially with OC, the power consumption can be really high. That's why I tracked the power consumption during the benchmark running Far Cry 6 1080p high. You can see the power consumption listed on the left side of the CPU. For example, a stock i5-12400 consumes about 52 watt during the benchmark when it's running stock. Now with heavy OC, it's only about 15 watt more, which is not really that much. But now look at the FPS per euro, which is the chart you're looking at. The 12400 with heavy OC is about three times as good as the 12900K it's about twice as good as a Ryzen 5 5600. In the end, everything will depend on the main boards and the main board manufacturers if they will allow this also on cheaper boards. For now, we only have two boards which are confirmed. I hope that there are more in the list from ASUS that can support this, maybe like a 250 or 300 euro board. I just hope that Intel will not straight completely ban and, and block this because I'm pretty sure if Intel sees this and sees that the 12400 at certain settings can even beat a 12900K in gaming, that's certainly absolutely impressive. But that's also the origin of overclocking. That's Intel. That's what you have to keep in mind. When everybody started with overclocking, it was because you purchased a cheaper product and then you spent some time with it, you manually tweaked it and you were able to gain a bit more performance. With the 12400, we were able to show that it can run like 33% more performance, which is absolutely impressive. But now if you think about, let's say a 12900K, this CPU is already from factory, heavily binned and tweaked to the max. So even though Intel is advertising this as a heavily overclockable CPU, in the end it's not, because it's already running so much on the edge. But the 12400 is an ideal CPU to have overclocking for, and I just hope that you can see this and maybe not directly instantly block everything and maybe, I don't know what you're going to do with Asus, but Asus, you are my hero. Thank you very much for your work. That's, that's why I love you guys and um, yeah, amazing. Thank you very much. See you soon. Bye-bye.